Wow. And that's just a one one little notch on her belt, Tracy G. Hello. I want to open up these phone lines first of all because our next guest, Jessica, and now you say it's Nabungo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, who's the author of the book? The Catch Me If You Can, One Woman's Journey to Every Country in the World is available now. This is an awesome book for Father's Day. If you're looking for a gift for fathers, because if once fathers read this book and find out how resourceful she was and how she was able to travel this entire globe Mm -hmm. um, through money from donations, raising money on her own, starting her own businesses, and sometimes not even money, just probably relationships and bartering. Um, you can do the same thing. You know, her journey is her journey. We all have our own individual journeys. But I want you to get this book for your fathers. Yes. To encourage them to take you on trips. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> and to take themselves. And take that's themselves how you treat on trips. Yourself as royalty. This entire world is our home. So find a new living room to hang out in. Absolutely. And we <laughs> have her. We have her with us right now. The one and only Jessica Nabongo is here. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. You know, baby Sam, uh, Sam, who is um, a good friend. <laughs> Affectionately known as. Baby Sam, who, um, who who's a pillar in this music business, entertainment. I've known her for decades. This is a great friend of mine's family. You know, she told me about you and your journeys. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, and you know, and she said she got a book. And I was like, yo, I would, I would love to talk to her about the book. But I hadn't read the book. She just told me what it was about. Then I started reading the book and going through these pages and finding out your parents are Ugandan. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Okay. Yep. And you yep. were born where Michigan or Detroit. Detroit, Michigan. Detroit. Yes. You don't give me Detroit vibe. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are because <laughs> and and often what's so crazy is like when I'm at home, people in Detroit are like, "Where are you from?" And I'm like, "Detroit." They're like, "No, you're not." I'm like, "I am." I grew up like my zip code four eight two two three. Like it's so a you, Detroit zip Detroit. code. Okay. Um, but even Detroiters don't really they don't. feel like I'm very Detroit. Well, you're the new Detroit, it right? Is. Yeah. Okay. So, what was your household like growing up? Yeah. So I grew up with both parents and two older sisters. And to your point about dads taking their kids around. Um, my father passed two days after my 19th birthday, but mm. that year, that January, just he and I went to London. But since I was four, I've been traveling internationally with my parents. So uh-huh. like Jamaica and Mexico and the Bahamas and Uganda, of course, and the UK, um, because they like to travel. Okay. You know, they weren't diplomats. They weren't in the military. My dad was a chemist. My mom was a nurse. Uh-huh. They just love traveling. Sometimes they took us. Sometimes they left us at home and went with their friends. Really? Um, yeah, so they opened up the world to us. In your book, you talk about this little blue book that was just kind of like a key to the world, and you were referring to your passport, mm-hmm. right? How many passport books have you been through now? Oh, boy, stun on us. I, like, maybe 12. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, so it could be 14. She got Jay-Z beat. <laughs> you beating Jay-Z. <laughs> I mean, I've been in more countries than our former president, Barack Obama. So. Oh. Wow. What, what does it mean to you? And then we could talk about your journey, but even in that clip that we played, um, they talked about you being the first black woman mm-hmm. to travel 195 countries. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you? Yeah, you know, it's it's still mind-blowing. That, I finished in 2019, okay. and for me, it's still like, did that actually happen? Is this real? You know, people come up to me in the street who've been following my journey for, for years and say things. For me, at this point, it feels like a thing that I did. It belongs to everyone else. Okay. Mm. Because the journey for me, it started as a personal journey, but it came so it became so much bigger than me. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't even belong to me anymore. That's how I feel about it. And and I'm fine with that because I think it did inspire people to do it. It continues to inspire people. Obviously, now with this book published by National Geographic, mm. it's going to continue to inspire people for decades, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, it for me, it was something that I was passionate about doing for myself. And then I was like, oh, people care yeah. that I'm doing this. And it, it does mean something because... What was important for me in writing this book was that my images were included. Yeah. So yeah. there's over 300 images. Um, the ones without me, I took. Uh-huh. And it was really important because how often do we see a black woman in Kyrgyzstan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We don't have images of that, you know Word. what I mean? But uh-huh. now we do. Or a black woman um, overlooking a beach in Yemen. Uh-huh. Like literally now that's cemented in the canon of National Geographic. Uh-huh. And that's important. They don't have a ton of black writers. Uh-huh. You know, I, I have to say a quick shout out to my editor, Allison Johnson. Okay, Allison. She's amazing. She's She reached out to me to write this book. 
And she now has four books that are being written by black women right now because for her, she's like, it's important that we add other voices Uh to National Geographic books. So she's a white woman. But for her, she's like, this is important. I have the power, so I'm going to do that. So shout out to her for like recognizing. Allison, that's her name? Yes, Allison. Okay, Johnson. Allison. <laughs> wow. We see you. Stand tall. Mm-hmm. Okay, Allison. Mm-hmm. We love that. Uh, yeah. let, let me ask you this. Um, this is, I, I was sharing a story with her, Tracy, with Jessica about my child, my daughter, who I think is fascinating. I like, do as know, well. She's an amazing spirited person. And I had to rewire the way I think. Um to adjust to her world and how she sticks and moves and navigates through college and navigates through the workforce, so on and so forth. So like Jessica, like my daughter, is someone who excelled in scholastics, uh, was highly sought after when it came to higher education. Mm -hmm. Uh, When she graduated, was highly sought after when it came to corporations and big businesses. Jessica actually worked for Pfizer at one point in her life, mm-hmm. right? That's my first job out of college. Her first job out of college. She's mm-hmm. making nearly what six figures. Mm-hmm. She got a she got a, a, a expense account. She got a mm. a condo. She eventually bought. You know, she they paying for her phone bill. That's how you car. do it. The car, the company car, and Wi Fi. <laughs> they paying forget. for all of that. She got this amazing job that people would sit and make a career out of, <laughs> and she chose to do what? Quit. Woo! After how long? Two years. Two years, you quit to do what? To go teach English in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> My family thought I was crazy, but also, really quickly, that. So I quit in 2008. Okay. That's when the economic downturn was starting. Mm-hmm. Pfizer had laid off 20,000 people, and I didn't get laid off. And I wanted to because I wanted the severance. Okay. You know? <laughs> and I remember when I didn't get laid off, my manager told me he had gotten laid off but still was working. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, you didn't hear me. You still have a job. I was like, okay. Can I switch with somebody? Because <laughs> I knew I was going to be quitting. Um, and even when I told my regional manager, he was like, you're young. You don't know what you're doing. You don't want to quit this job. And I was like, mm, yeah, I know. I'm going to Japan. Bye. Mm-hmm. And my family thought I was insane. I literally, I shaved my head because mm-hmm. at the time I was wearing a pixie cut. I was one of those girls oh, at the yes. shop at 5 a.m. Early. every Tuesday. Um, and I didn't do my own hair. So I just shaved my head and I moved to Japan and my family thought I had lost wow. my mind. So while your family's thinking you lost your your mind, what are you thinking about yourself? You know, for me, I was just like, I was doing really, really well at Pfizer. Um, I was up for my third promotion in two years. Wow. And I just was like, is this all there is? I had these ideas. I was like, I want to be the youngest hospital rep in the company because I started at 21 because I graduated early from St. John's mm-hmm, here in New York. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, uh, cu- uh, uh, cum laude, right? I, yeah, magna cum laude. Ma- magna yeah. cum laude, yeah, okay. Get it all. Excuse me, I didn't yeah. say that right. I'm Get like, it all. Ma- ma- magna, uh, magna cum laude. Okay, my bad. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Magna. Uh, <laughs> you really stupid. <laughs> Um, But yeah, for me, I was like, is this all there is? Like, I always had goals because I always, you know, had a commitment to excellence. But I just woke up one day and like basically my bonus at work was really crappy and Mm. I was very unhappy. I can be a brat sometimes. And I was like, (laughs) I'm quitting. I don't need this. I'm going to, you know, and I didn't know what I wanted, Mm -hmm. but I was like, let me just try something else. And I had a friend who was teaching English in Japan and I was like, "Eh, let's do that. Wow. And so she flew to Japan. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you started teaching English in Japan, right? Um, and then you decided to go back to school? or Yeah, so I loved living in Japan. And I was like, okay, I want to stay abroad for three years, but I hate working. So what can I do? I'm going to go back to school. <laughs> so I quit my job, and I started my blog just after that, the thecatchmeifyoucan.com. And um, so I traveled for nine months, then I went to London, and I did my master's at the London School of Economics. That was the only school I applied to. Literally, I just didn't want to work, uh-huh. but I wanted to live abroad. So uh-huh. school was the solution. So you got your master's <laughs> I love it. out of laziness, like you didn't yeah, want to no, work. No, no, no. Yes. Respect us millennials. She said yes. No, Whatever. yo. No, for real. I hate work. I'm lazy. I don't like work, but I love of academia. Yes. So I was like, this is cool. So you made it work. Yeah. Like in your book, you, I'm going to read from it. You said, Americans, including me, have been socialized to believe that a successful life is finding a high powered and high paying career, True. buying a huge house and a fancy car, and having a beautiful family. Mm-hmm. That's how, what, that's not how you define success. No. For me now, my success is defined by my freedom. 
like my freedom of location, my mm -hmm. freedom of time. Every single day I wake up and that I've woken up for probably the last five to seven years, I choose what I get to do. And sometimes if I have meetings, sometimes I'll cancel because I don't feel like doing it. I take every Wednesday off. I didn't mm -hmm. this week because it's pub week. But I take every single Wednesday off and I have therapy on Wednesdays and every other Wednesday I take I do a 90 minute massage. And that so I've created this life that works for me. Yes. Wow. And allows me to not be lazy anymore, but just live my life in a way that suits me. You're a designer. <laughs> You're designing your life. So mm -hmm. then now you mentioned all these modes of freedom. But what about financial freedom? Mm -hmm. At that time, how were you adjusting? And you speak about this a lot in the book because mm -hmm. people often equate travel with wealth. Yeah. You know, and there sure. are a lot of privileges that come mm -hmm. with it, but you don't have to be a millionaire no, to travel I, and I'm live not good. I'm a millionaire. Okay. Just, you know, I'm not. <laughs> Just look like one. You look like a millionaire. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm very good at investing, but y'all seen the stock market. So my, yeah. <laughs> I just been watching my money like just evaporate. <laughs> like, is this ever going to come back? Um, but no, like I'm definitely financially savvy. Like that goes without say. But I was always working remotely. So before the idea of a digital nomad, mm -hmm. I was a digital nomad. So in 2012, December 2012, I was working at the UN in Rome and I was over it. And so I told him, I was like, I'm quitting. I'm leaving. Um, I'm going to South America for six weeks to figure out what I want to do with my life. And they were like, okay, could you not, though? <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, I'll work for you, but I'm leaving Rome. Mm -hmm. So they let me work remotely. And so that, for me, was the first time I was like, oh, this is amazing. So January 2013, I started remote working. Mm -hmm. And I never stopped. You well, never... there was a, a little, I came back to the U.S. Um, in fall of 14 and was working at a consulting firm in D.C. It was my first time working in an American office space uh -huh. in a gray cubicle. And I was like, I'm going to die here. Mm -hmm. And so I worked there for one year. All the racial microaggressions, all uh -huh. that stuff. I worked there for one year. And then I quit. And then I sued them uh -oh. for racial discrimination. Oh, they it was wild. And it really? Was, it was stuff that people, I think, are used to just accepting and Everyday doing. Everyday tolerance, Yeah, but right? they're like, I don't want to be the angry black woman. I don't, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't want them to not promote me because I'm complaining. But it's mm -hmm. like, no, you are not going to talk to me like you're crazy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I quit and I've never worked for anyone since then. And now the money was not always right. Mm -hmm. Um, I was living on my friend's couch in LA. Cause mm -hmm. I was just like, I was like traveling back and forth to Asia from LA. Um, but again, for me, it was like, I was okay not having a ton of money, but having my freedom. Right. And I was like, I'm a smart cookie. I can figure it out. But I've also always excelled at my work. Even if I hated my job, I always did really well. So I always knew that was my safety net. I could always go back to my old job. I quit my job at the UN three times and they kept taking me and back. And they cook you wow. back? They kept taking me back. That's the that UN good. too. <laughs> right. That, that's just not easy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about these things to set up this beautiful journey all these moments are part of your journey this woman went to 195 countries Woo! citizens this book is on amazon today mm -hmm. let's sell 20 of them right now and then we'll sell 20 more in a few minutes <laughs> amazon.com go on the uh, amazon.com right now i'm gonna give everybody a few seconds if you're at your jobs mm -hmm. if you're at home the book is called the catch me if you can mm -hmm. Uh, a one, one woman's journey to every country in the world. Jessica Nabongo is here. Um, so when I first, when Sam first told me about your travels, I, I've traveled a few countries. You know, Jessica, I've been, <laughs> been, been around a few. The world. You've been to 195. I've been to five. <laughs> 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 now, but I've been a few places, and you and you just mentioned these microaggressions that you experienced in the workplace. What kind of racial microaggressions yep. did you experience in travel? Where, where was it blatant, and where? Was it not that you might have thought it would have been? Um, so the U.S. Okay. Like, I had cops in Miami put a gun in my face point blank range. That did not happen to me in Iraq. Wow. That didn't happen to me in Saudi Arabia. That happened to me in Miami on South Beach. You know what I mean? What, what happened? Um, they thought I was breaking into my friend's house. So I was staying at my friend's wow. house. Yeah, I was staying at my friend's house, mm. my friend's neighbor. You can imagine what my friend's neighbor looked like. Yep. Okay. Called the police and told them I was breaking in. Me and my friend, we were in beachwear. Uh -huh. And Grant, we had lost the key. So there was um, there was a locksmith there with us. We're in beach clothes. And they didn't, I guess, whatever. And the neighbor thought we were breaking in. The cops came in with guns drawn. And I'm like, 
what you know like he's a locksmith he's a locksmith and they're like well we got a call there was a break i was like he's a locksmith this is my friend's house you know i'm speaking as fast as i can um because i've never been in this situation and then finally they put the guns down they're like we need id and i'm like my hands are shaking i'm trying to find my id my friend is like hurry up i'm like whoa because they weren't pointing the gun at her they were pointing the gun at me we Mm -hmm. can talk about colorism later um and it was just it was so wild to me and i said to the cop did you have to do that Mm -hmm. and he said to me we shoot first, ask questions later. What? Wow. He said that to me. Here in the United States. And and, P, and this was like probably 2012, maybe? Somewhere like 2011 back then. So, you know, now everything is heightened, but no, did not care. And people were like, did you go file a report for what? That wasn't going to go anywhere, right? Nowhere. So you're saying that this was the, in terms of racial uh Aggressions, aggressions. This is the worst place by far. As, by far. Oh my goodness. I want to be in. I want everybody to hear me now because I feel like, and I put the quote in here from Malcolm X. I'm going to paraphrase, and he said, "American propaganda is such that they get us to believe, no matter how much hell we catch in the U.S., mm-hmm. that it's worse anywhere else." Mm. And it's not. It's not. Let me tell I went to Russia. Okay. Solo. So I've been to 89 countries solo. I went to Russia. I went to St. Petersburg and Moscow. It was amazing. People were so nice to me, even with language barriers. Uh My taxi drivers, everybody was so, I was doing, I was applying for visas. People would help me find the embassies. Everyone was so nice to me. A lot of black people are afraid to go to Russia because of what they think Russian, of how Uh Russians will respond to them. Uh And so for me, the biggest thing I learned on this journey is that most people are good. You know, Mm -hmm. most people aren't racist or misogynist or homophobic. Mm -hmm. Most people are good. My journey was made beautiful by the kindness of strangers. I could not have survived in 89 countries by myself without the kindness of strangers. Mm -hmm. I think about when I got to Iraq, I was so tired. I was doing a bunch of travel and my driver picked me up. I was like, I just want to go to my hotel. We were supposed to go on this whole tour. I was like, I just got to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. He said, well, um, can I just take you to my house and have my wife cook you lunch like you just flew in? The driver? Wow. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Never would happen here. Yes. And he took me to his house, and I hung out with his wife and his son, and she made me lunch. Because he's like, you just flew in. Like, at least let me feed you. What country was that? Iraq. Wow. Mm-hmm. Iraq. And never once did you think, hmm, I don't know if this is a good idea. Because if that happened in New York, I would not. Go no. at all. I would so not accept I that hope, invitation. Honestly, what I really hope people get out of this book is to, I hope it changes the way people think about the world, but I also hope it helps, encourages people, give people a chance. Because mm-hmm. to me, I believe I'm a good person. So why would I assume you're a bad person just because I don't know you? Hmm. You yeah. know, obviously keep your wits about you. Yeah. But most people really are good. You know, I've done some, you know, I've been walking around streets at night in places I don't know, and nothing has happened to me, honestly. Like, someone tried to steal my phone in Paris, and a taxi driver in Rome tried to kiss me on my mouth. Those are the, so Miami (laughs) and Paris and Rome are the three worst things that have ever happened to me. And then leaving Pakistan, they thought I was a drug mule, and that was a very traumatic experience, because they, like, put me in an x-ray, and it was, it's in the book. X-ray, yeah, yeah, I read that part. They thought she was, they thought she was transporting drugs. In my stomach. In her belly. That was wild, and I was alone. That was the worst thing that happened to me when I was traveling, for sure. But I've been to 195 countries, and, like, it's a literal handful of things. Yeah. You know, and now, okay, as a visible African and, you know, a decidedly anti-African world, I have a lot of issues with immigration. Okay. But most people won't have those situations the way that I do. So when I use my American passport, they think it's fake. Mm -hmm. If I'm using my Uganda passport, they think I'm trying to, like, overstay a visa. Um, One time coming back to the U.S. to Dulles in D.C., the customs officer asked me for a second piece of ID. Wow, in D.C.? Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my American passport is not good enough to get me into my country of birth, the United States. And what do you say? I don't know. She was like, I can't tell if this is you. Wow. I said, wow. That's weird, because I, at that point, had been to over 40 countries. Wow. I'd never had that happen. Mm. Okay, but these are moments. Yeah. These are moments. These are moments, the overall experience. Amazing. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. The, these are a handful Full of, of moments. moments that I'm sharing. Yeah. I've been to 195 countries. Like it's the world is amazing. You know, mm-hmm. I've you know, I've danced with people all over the world. I've drank with people all over the world. Um, obviously 
Africa is my favorite continent Mm -hmm. and the Middle East is my second favorite region. But even in Europe, like I've had Belgrade. I was in Serbia by myself and had a ball because people were just open to like hanging out. And and also I'm open. So that's the thing. When you travel, you have to be open minded to get the best out of it. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, You did something really interesting with one of Tracy's favorites, um, Boss. Boss, Boss, Boss. Boss, I say, okay. Dreamville. Yeah, Dreamville, J. Uh Cole and the whole nine. and and, and, St. John's alum. Yes, St. John. That's the homie. And and you, you actually, were you in one of the videos he shot? No, I, so I wasn't in the video. So um, we all were in Sudan together. So Boss, Eve, obviously mm-hmm. their brothers, DJ Moma, who mm-hmm. I'm sure y'all know too. They're Brother. all Sudanese. Mm-hmm. And so we were all in Sudan for Christmas. What year was that? 2017. Mm-hmm. And so what a lot of people don't know is that Sudan has the most pyramids of any country in the world. Oh. And they're older um, than the ones in Egypt. So we went to this area called Meroe. It was like 14 Damn. of us. Uh-huh. And we went up there. It was amazing. There's no gates. There's no ticket booth. It's just there. There's no tourists. It was only us, our group. And so Boss shot the cover of Milky Way uh-huh. while we were there. And I don't think he knew at the time that was going to be the cover, but he shot it when we were all there together in Sudan. That Milky Way project. That was that's nice. My that's my favorite album. That's your favorite album by him? <laughs> yeah. So what's your relation to him? Y'all went to school together? Or? So I went to school with uh, Jermaine uh-huh. and Eve. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we were all, well, me and Jermaine were quite close at St. John's. And uh-huh. then so, you know, as everything started happening, I was still always around and then you know and then that everything they're doing happened and so did you, did you think he was a dope rapper back then I did. So I used to like, um, I was really involved on campus. So would help him like with the, um, what do you call it? Open mic. So he uh-huh. would always do open mic nights. And, and he was actually president of Haraya, which was the black student union. Mm-hmm. And I was vice president at the time. But oh, yeah. Wow. I, now, did I think he was going to become one of the greatest rappers alive? No, I mean, I didn't, <laughs> you know, and it's so funny. Cause like, I've seen him over the years, like, it's been obviously a long time and I've been there from the beginning and I remember I don't know maybe after the second album I said to him like how did you get here and he said I could always see it wow Mm. you know that's before people were always talking about manifestation Mm -hmm. he was like I could always see it and I remember when I was in Japan we still talked all the time on AIM remember AIM of course yes and I remember the day he had a meeting with Jay-Z because we were checking I'm like hey what's going on he was like oh nothing just came out of a two hour meeting with Jay-Z I said what this was November 2008 Uh and I think he signed February 09 as the first artist that signed on um, Rock Nation yes Yes. exactly exactly so so yeah it's been it's been amazing to see the journey What's in the water on that college campus? Listen, <laughs> my you gosh. know who else went there? Vanessa Simmons was in school. Yeah. Vanessa too. Simmons went yep. there. That's right, she Vanessa did. Yeah, so it was like a little. Oh, the, all of us were in that like three year period. And you know who wasn't there but was drunk on your campus every cool. other weekend? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I love it because during that time, one of my best friends, Rochelle Rice, she was mm-hmm. also at St. John's. Mm-hmm. So I also know Jermaine. Okay. Also, Damian Scott. That yes, went to, Damien. Yes, of course, that Damien was, and yep, Adam. Yep, the whole everybody crew. Rich. Yes. Yes. Happen yes. here. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> and do you New know York. do you know Spinfo? Yes, of so course. So of course, and then Spinfo was like doing all the parties at that so time. Many of my birthday. Yes, I gave yes. him a couple bags at Pace University. Uh, yes. Wait, I but, love but it. did y'all know Reggie? Reggie? No. <laughs> So we trying to mess up what we got going on. Let's get back to the book. I'm sorry. <laughs> they catch me. Jessica looked at me like, no, there was no Reggie in our clip. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie wasn't out. a part of the crew. <laughs> but yes, but shout out to all of them. Yeah. St. Yeah, John's yeah. really is. And um, I, you know what I love? I love that they're all still working together. Yeah, I absolutely. think that's so dope. Like, you know, it's really crazy when you see, like, obviously I have a personal relationship, but I can recognize the magnitude of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. But I love that when I, when I see them out, it's still all of them together. Yeah. I think that's so dope. I I agree. That's beautiful. Um, is there a this is an amazing book. Let's sell twenty more. Hello. Let's go to Amazon.com citizens and eight 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 seven four two three three four five. If you want to if you want to learn how to travel the world, this is the book I want you to all get on Amazon. The Catch Me If You Can. The Catch Me If You Can. One Woman's Journey to Every Country in the World by Jessica Nabongo. Where's the podcast? Mm, facts oh yeah that's you got 195 obvious. episodes already <laughs> ready to go that's a fact 
You Each know? country is an episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know, with, it is. With the stories around it, and I can help you get that started if okay, you're interested. Well, we'll have a conversation offline about okay, that. Okay. okay. Is that in the works, though? Um, it was in the works. Okay. It was in the works with, with another network. Um, okay. And it didn't work out. Honestly, it didn't work out because I had a lot going on. Um, I was having surgery in October, and like... I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> do what work? <laughs> right, exactly. See, you see what I'm saying? What I'm saying? <laughs> Legitimately, I was like, "You want 48 episodes out of this 52 week calendar year?" I was like, "I can't, I can't do that." Yeah, you know, because I knew the book was coming. I have a TV show in development, and you know, I want to do. I wanted to keep myself a little bit freedom open for other. Yeah, freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why I couldn't commit to it because it was too much work. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to work together. I think we just need a new word because you were able to do to to do this. Let book. me tell you something about this book. It took so this journey has been since August 2020, mm-hmm. and I tried writing it at home, like in Detroit. I I bought a desktop computer and a desk, and I set up this whole office, and I was like, I'm gonna write a book, and it didn't work. And one day I woke up and I was like, I can write this book anywhere. And so I ended up going down to the Four Seasons in Punta Mita, Mexico, and I lived there for six weeks, and I wrote this book down there. I love your life, Jessica. <laughs> for real, I swear. goals. I, I, yeah, um, I, I'm going to say a quote that I read in the book, too, that I thought was really interesting. But first, I, I want to bring Charles up from Atlanta. Charles, rise and shine. Charles, say hi to Jessica and Tracy. What up, Charlie? Rise and shine. Good morning. And rising. Yes. Uh, Miss Jessica, Tracy G. What up, boo? My man Sway. Yes. I just I was just thinking this morning that I'm thankful for you guys because I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the music I probably never would have listened to, I get from the station. Now today, I'm buying a book from a lady that just totally inspired me. Oh, um, I only traveled out of the country with the Navy, mm-hmm. and that's really kind of like, it's kind of stringent when you do that. So listening to you travel... As you have, I just feel like, yeah, I want to get out there. I want to see some other stuff as well because I'm totally just bogged down with what I'm doing where I'm at right now. So I just, um, one of the things I noticed, your your energy is such, I sense freedom in your energy. That's what I'm getting. Thank Mm -hmm. you. That's what What I want. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I just want to say thank you. I have the book. I was going to buy it for a couple other friends, but I'm, uh, I'm going to check it out first. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, Trust just buy it. Go ahead and yeah. buy it, Charles. Five minimum. I guarantee yeah. you, every friend you get yeah. gift this book to will thank you. Mm-hmm. I guarantee uh, you. Well I, have, huh? well, I have a wife and two daughters, so Boom. I might get them all their own copy as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and it's gorgeous. I have, of, I have a friend of mine and a nephew. That they, they travel out of the country all the time, uh, Belize and Putacana, looking to buy property and such. So it might be good for them as well because they're 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 out there doing it already. That's smart. But thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Charles. Appreciate, Appreciate you, man. Mm-hmm. You're a right, citizen, a Charles. You're a citizen. Sway in the morning, and folks can treat this book like their own vision board. Yeah, in a sense, like flipping that. through it and kind of experiencing through the images what it would be like to get there before you actually get there. I'm curious, Jess. Do you feel like there's a difference between traveling and vacationing? Yes. Okay. What is that difference? I, too, like vacation. (laughs) Um, So for me, when I'm thinking about, okay, traveling and wanting to, like, go and um, really explore a place and do a deep dive culturally, um, that's different because, right, I'm focusing on, like, meeting guides and having a fixer or whatever and really, like, digging into the culture. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes I just want to lay on a beach and do nothing, you know? So I definitely think those are two different things. And, and like, I love to hike. I love the outdoors. So sometimes I want to do trips like that Mm -hmm. or... Or when I go to like Norway and Finland, I usually travel to Scandinavia in the winter because I love dog sledding and snowshoeing and all these little things. So, um, so yeah, it, I do all types of different travel. Oh my goodness! I'm going to dog read a sledding. quote that I think um, definitely uh, complements this book. Uh, the French philosopher Pierre Tilhard de Chardin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I lost my French a few years ago. Otherwise, I ought to put the accent on it. <laughs> Give it a try. We are not human beings in this in this life. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Why did you want to incorporate this? Because, you know, we get so bogged down in race, gender. Yep. 
nationality, body type, sexuality, none of that matters. Because I truly believe that we are spiritual beings and we're going to cross into the next plane, right? And mm -hmm. that's going to be a next lifetime. You could be somebody completely different. You could be the person that you think you hate right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I believe we have to let all of that go and just be people. You know, just be those spiritual beings meeting, colliding with other amazing souls. You know, I think I, <laughs> I think a lot about the people that have come into my life, right? You know, I and I never think about, like, race or religion or anything like that. Like, a ton of my close friends are Muslim. Who cares? Like, I don't even care that they're Muslim, you know? Like, I respect whatever their decision is. You know, I have a ton of friends who are gay. I have a ton of friends who are lesbian. Who, I don't, I literally don't care. I don't even think about them like, oh, that's my gay friend. Right. No, it's like, that's my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a person. And so, for me, I wanted to include that because I really want people, through reading these stories, to start thinking. Getting back to humanity, we've lost that. Mm. We've lost that. How can you simply not care about somebody just because of their race? Do you think they don't feel pain in right. the same way? That is insanity. Right. You know, and I think like racism in particular in the U.S. is normalized, mm -hmm. right? Homophobia is normalized. Like people say heinous things about gay people, and a lot of them are our friends, and we don't check them because mm. it's like, well, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. No, you have to check people because mm -hmm. that's why, why. First of all, here's my thing about homophobia. Why are you obsessed with who somebody else is sleeping with mm -hmm. in the privacy of their own mm -hmm. home? That's weird. Mm -hmm. That obsession with that, for me, is weird. Who cares? Just let people be people. And the fact of the matter is, to me, most people in the world are just letting people be people. Mm. There's a little minority who's incredibly loud, but that's not who people are. So I just hope that I put it in there to be a reminder to people to get past all the nonsense, get past all of this. Because at the end of the day, if we're all just standing out here naked, what really matters? What really matters? Jessica, you are amazing. Yes. I feel like we gotta do a series on you, though. This is, is we can't we can't we can't cover enough in thirty minutes. Yeah, we'll start. The, we'll do a trial form of the podcast here. <laughs> yeah, that, was this the first episode? Maybe there it is. Mm -hmm. It was a banger. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take that. Okay. What is it called? The Catch Me If You Can podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do that. I'll send you the audio, Sam. Y'all go ahead and rock with it. <laughs> and also, Jess is quite the fashionista, citizen. When you get the opportunity to watch this on YouTube, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. And I Thank heard you. you've been wearing clothes throughout this press run all from um, African designers. African designers, yeah. yes. So I've done, um, this week I did Good Morning America. Um, I did Breakfast Club. I did the Today Show. Um, and now I have the pleasure of being here. Every single day I've been wearing African designers because I think that's important. I uh -huh. think it's important that, you know, I, I enjoy the European designers as well. But I really think it's important to continue elevating um, things that are coming out of the continent. Amen. Mm -hmm. You've done an excellent looks. job, Jessica Nabongo. We didn't even ask you about love. All right. Ooh, I'm that's single. Part two. So. You're single now? Well, you, right. you don't keep a job. How you going to keep a man or a woman or whatever you date? You don't know, keep a man. man. I'm okay, looking okay. for a man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did you find any foreign experiences? You know, I dabbled while I was traveling. Mm. Um, you know, I got to meet some nice guys and hang out a little bit. Of course. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Where's the best right. wood laid at? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what country lays the best wood? Is that what you asked, Tracy? <laughs> My God. I just want to know about the agriculture. I, I can't ask that question. I can only repeat it. You want to know about the agriculture? That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh. Nigeria. Okay, I knew it was going to be the continent. You said Nigeria. <laughs> Look what at that. Heck? Jessica fell back. Nigeria, <laughs> motherfucker. Not I, memories. I guys, what page in that book is Nigeria? Ebo, Europa, oh, no matter how you slice it. <laughs> Yo. Bingo, baby. I was not expecting that. <laughs> man, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Nabongo, give her a round of applause, man. Woo! Educating us on the planet, yo. We love you, Jess. We love you, Jess. Congratulations. <laughs> you guys get the book to catch me if you can. One woman's journey to every country in the world. <laughs> Jessica Nabongo will play this song and dedicate it to her and all of her fun in Nigeria. Yes. All right. Hey. 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 We got Black Watch Cycling Club coming up. Group of black men who cycle. Yeah. Featuring Gray Rizzy. Gray Rizzy. <laughs>